So today we're gonna see uh two very modulus problem of yesterday when we learned invariance like and stability like tasks. Um we'll see an example in coding. Actually, we're, we're also gonna do a one-dimensional example by hand, right? So that we, we can realize right, what the problems are and how we can solve them by uh, in a way relaxing one of the tasks. Right? So to do that, let's uh, first like pick up where we were yesterday by by combining right, the Two types, two types of tasks. Let's see. Creation. Oh. And uh, This we said we did it in this way. We start the states of the stability like task and the invariance like task in the same minimum energy optimization problem, which is which means we minimize the norm of the control input subject it will state that uh, what we call L F C of V for X. Plus L F one of X times U less than or equal to minus half of one of X. And the divides by what class? Which is given by L F zero H of X. Plus left one each of the same two, each. Two pieces that are in this combination with B, that is B, is R from the other function, which we use right our system, higher. Then we have the default value function. So while the CLF is used to drive X to a desired set where V is zero, the CDF is used to drive X in a design set where H is positive. These are the goals. Uh, keep X in the set where H of X is. And here is that is line X to the set. This is a big, this is a minus. That's the reason for this thing. Last thing is these symbols that we introduced yesterday. So, in general, L, uh, now, let's let, let's see this example F L F C of H X equal to the H B X times F C of X. It's called the lead derivative and it was shown. Okay, so this is where we were yesterday, and we said that could be infeasibility problems, which means these two constraints are in a way completely. Each other, and at some point, there is no U that satisfies both of them. 
Why does this not happen when we have only one system? By definition, right? because if B is a, is a truly open function, no matter what X is, there is always a B that satisfies this inequality. Analogously, if H is a, is a proper for any X that we have in here, 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 there is a U that satisfies this inequality. Hello. But then, when we are looking for a unit that satisfies both, then we eliminate something. That is, uh, that is the reason. Now, let's see an example of a uh, 1D one one D problem. Let's see. We can See. So we have uh, x dot equal to two and x now in the five. Also, you can let's say let's say it's it's like the the mountain climbing example. Let's so we have. We have a mountain, so that's our mountain, which we can walk on. We can walk up and down. Uh, so this is our, our the which we need to X is the height of uh, this person that we need to right. So U is the velocity uh, in which we move up or down, I believe. So X is the height of the elevation. Division of this person. U is its uh, um, its speed its speed. Now, let's say we have two objectives. One is we want to go down, all the way down, right? To the, this one, that is at elevation zero. The other objective is that we never will be close this height. So this is the same problem to what we were somehow trying to describe yesterday when we are on a that like is two dimensional mountain. When we are moving on this mountain, we are walking around, and then at some point we are crossing this level. Um, then we, will, we don't want to see. Uh, so we need to stop or move away. In this case, it's just a simplification, it's just a one we just move on one line. We can complete our duties our uh, elevation by moving this next level. Okay, so let's say this is uh, this is x, this is x uh, o. Now the obstacle is the obstacle, and this is uh, x bar. What to do to solve this problem? Stability like that. Which means is the point x bar can be modeled using the only application, which looks like that. Right? It's zero when the x is equal to x bar. This particular case, uh, x bar is zero. 
The invariance like parts, which the system stay above this x zero, can be modeled as x minus, oh, sorry, x uh, oh, that's a that's over oxygen, can be modeled as both. So that B of X is equal to zero, and if and only if X is equal to zero. And H of X is greater than equal to zero when uh, X is greater than equal to X over. So that's the that's our that's our these are our plus models. So now we've got the quantities that we need to define those constraints in that optimization and get minus after. We have L F zero D, but since we are a single integral, we have zero to zero. So L F one of U X, which is E D D X F one times Q, has to be less than or equal to minus. Let's say just minus b of x, right? So we can choose plus k function one again. Okay. Now this dv dx is equal to x f one is the number one, and uh, b of x. Same using the same process, we can calculate the h dx times f one x greater than minus the h x. And this time, looking at this, we have that the h dx is one. Uh, f one goes this one is x. Minus oh. So this optimization problem becomes very simple. X U with less than equal to one square and U greater than or equal to minus x plus x oh
Okay, let's also give a number to this x zero. Right? In a value, let's say it's uh, it's equal to one. So that we can buy here the number one. Now let's say let's let's say x starts at uh, two, so elevation two. Right, we are somehow close to this feature. We start here. We want to go to zero. This is now two. We begin. We want to go to zero, but we. we uh, we don't have a cross the elevation path. So when x is equal to e, and this specifies e, e up to four u less than u minus one, and u less than u minus one. Oh, maybe we start in a good place. Right? <laughs> we start at X, but then we go to X. Okay. Yeah. So the U A U that satisfies these two things has to be less than minus six and greater than minus. Two. That's what this is saying. Why is that? Because if you are at X is equal to three, so somewhere up here. And to go to zero, you need to have a velocity that is uh, at least six in this direction. That's what our constraint is saying. Uh, so down. If you don't want to cross this number, number one elevation, then your velocity cannot be uh, lower than minus two. So you can you can still move with this direction right like down, but not that fast. Hmm? So already in this case, the the fact that we are asking the the system to go to zero at this speed is too much for not crossing this example. Hmm? Uh, of course you can say, yeah, but that depends that depends on our choice is, for example, of the, the class K function alpha that right, we put in front of here. Because we can say we don't need to ask this system to go down that fast, right? We can, we can put a constant here, say, for example, 0, 1, right? That's still valid in a way. We have a 0, 1 here. Which results in times right. Again, right. So in this case, we are asking the uh, 
uh, this 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 person to go down not that fast, right? um, which is sufficient to also avoid you know, this uh, this uh, red shape region. So there is the good need any problem in this specific way. Problem though is that if we are at x equal to x o, right? That means our person is here. It's right at the edge, right? And at the boundary of this intersect that we want to be invited. Then this problem becomes Here two, then minus one, and then one greater than zero. This is zero, right? Greater than zero. This is clear because if we are right at this edge, we need to go this way, not to cross this line. There is no other way. So you has to be equal to zero. But then here, no matter what number you put in front of this, right? No matter how small this number is, this is always be negative, it's always gonna be negative. So you has to be negative. You need to go down. No matter how slow you need to go down, we need to go down. So now um, this constraint here is saying go down. What's the, what's the green point? And this constraint here is the same in the world. So it doesn't matter, right? What, what, what choice of functions you do. There is a point in which this becomes invisible. Now, from this simple example, actually, we can see the effect of uh, the slab variable. Because what we said is that we can, in a way, relax the stability like constraint, stability like task, which means relaxing this constraint in favor of the environments. Constraint on environments like task. What does that mean? That that problem is. Relaxed becomes minimized u squared plus some delta squared state by by kappa and being positive. Now, some we have less than minus one plus delta in the u. And we can also write down the solution manually, right? The best possible, um, the best possible u and delta. That's all this. What are the optimal that u star and delta star? Right? Solution. So from looking at this constraint that says we need to go. We don't, we don't need to go down, right? U has been non negative. We don't need to go down. Um, if we're minimizing the U squared, then the U, U star is going to be zero. That's the best thing we can do if U has to be greater than or equal to zero. At the same time, if U is zero here, then we have delta greater than or equal to one. Since we are minimizing delta, that is delta size. Right? So, with this simple addition here, we have that the problem is feasible. We are satisfying definitely the invariance 
very bad invariance like us. We are executing invariance like us. We are not cross in the And we are relaxing the stability like us. You're saying, okay, I cannot go this way. So I'll set the key. Uh, in this case, V equal one. Right? So V does not go to zero because X does not go to zero. But uh, it takes a value of one, which is uh, V of X, where X. Is that reasoning clear? So this is this is again just a toy example to, figure, to, to understand what the value of this or what the, 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 the function of this lab variable is. Um, as you see, this lab variable is an optimization variable. So we need to figure it out and we need to figure out the best value of it um, based on based on Definition task B and H, the kappa that we have here, uh, the class A functions, right? So that constant in front of that. So it's a, it's a number of factors that, that I mean, fortunately, we do it with many. And so this is again, in fact, let me write it in the general, the general way, but this still. Is a is a complex quadratic problem. This time in U and delta, right? Because those are our position right But in general, this is what I think we ended up with. If we minimize the square norm of U plus A or kappa delta. Subject and zero dx plus L one dx of q is the minus of one plus the and L zero h of x plus L h greater than minus of two x. Right? We still have a complex for that. In U and that. Because the cost is quadratic in U. And the constraints are affine both in U. See here, U shows up multiplied by a uh, constant and rejects the constant. And the same thing with that. Maybe let's put it in this in the standard form, right? So that that's also useful for coding. Um, because in the end, we need to pass some matrices, right? That form the cost and the constraints. So let's try it in a more speed way. So our our position, our position variable is uh, is the stack of it and then. So what we call U so far now is U that which is this time the vector in Rn plus one. Then the cost U square not square plus a delta square is equal to we transpose u plus delta square, which in terms of this vector can be written as follows. So u transpose delta times the identity matrix kappa and then u. Yeah. 
you to do this, you to extend this multiplication, you have new transpose times identity times u, that's it, plus zero, plus zero, so delta zero plus u, and then times delta plus delta kappa delta. So this So this is our advanced matrix thing what we call P or two whatever in the code. The constraints are now we need to write we need to write these two as follows. So we have a matrix. The multiplies u delta less than or equal to another vector. So here we have four terms to be here we have two terms. And here we have a less than or equal. That's the standard. Uh, let's see. In the first constraint. So let's let's look at the first thing. We have L F one B of X the multiplies U is here. And then delta, which shows up on the left of the lesson we design. So that's minus one. And then on the right hand side of the left of the group, we have minus alpha one d of x. And we also have this term minus lf zero d of x. Then on the second screen, we have no delta, but here is zero. The term that multiplies u is LF one H of X, but here is a greater than or equal sign. So we bring this on the other side, and it's minus LF one H of X. And on the Left of the less than or equal, sorry, the right of the less than or equal, left of we have plus alpha two h of x plus lf zero h of x. Right, so it makes sense that all signs are swapped between the p and the h, right? Because in one case. Because we're, we're writing down the same thing, but one is a bit less than equal, the other one is greater than equal. So all the plus, all the plus become minus, uh, and all the minus become plus. And there is no delta, so that if we all you know, like this Q is equal to delta of I think in the code is this for H, not for H. H. We have that that decision is simple. Now we have to find the back of the delta. Delta of two G times delta less than the root of So 
this is going to give us new star that star. Oh, so the solution of the solution. And what we need to give to our robot in the end is this. Right? Let us start. We don't we don't really care, right? Of this value. Uh, whatever it is to make to make this uh, um constraints feasible. Mm -hmm. Just not to get into this thing. But um, we don't we don't use this value in the end, just use the input. Optimal because we call that here we are still in that feedback loop, right? So this is our control that gives that u star as an output. This u star is going to is going to our robot model. Our robot. We have a model, but this is in reality, it's really a robot. And the robot is giving us X. So we can, this is something that we can measure, we can estimate by remember the joint angles of the manipulator or the location of the final of whatever comes out of this robot is going. We can measure rest of it. And this X is that that uh, right. and it shows up in uh, G in H. So a little bit distorted, but Still a bit better. Okay, questions. Uh, so Delta uh, fabricates the solution for the case. Uh yeah, what do you mean by fabric? I uh, a piece that don't exist in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and this is still a model, of course. We're still working with a model, right? F0, F1 right? are still a, more, a mathematical model of the system. Yeah. But delta, you're right, is not something physical that, that is related to our, our problem. But then, what do you mean by public solution? Meaning that uh, we want to solve by uh, changing you, uh, but, but we don't have a solution, so let's bring them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It allows, you're right, yeah, in, in this sense, it allows uh, to find the you right, that otherwise will not exist. You can see um, in the case of uh, in the case of the the Lantin example, right? Um, you can see it as uh, in in a way enlarging the the physical center. So if we write another parenthesis here, um, we are on the mountain here, and we are trying to found it. Of this, of this uh, unsafe region. We said that the first constraint was saying that x has to be less than or equal to minus something. Uh, sorry, u. u has to be less than or equal to minus uh, minus something. I don't know. I think it was minus zero point one. Okay. Um, the safety constraint. Or the, the, the invariance right, related to the same says that u has to be greater than or equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So if you see, if you look at the feasible set, so the set of views that satisfy this view, 
this is uh, this case part where q means this one is this set less than this one is greater than or equal to zero. So in this case, there is no intersection here. So the physical set is empty. What do we do by, by adding that? We say, okay, you cannot be less than zero, minus zero point one, but can be less than minus zero point one plus what we discovered uh, equal to zero point one. Huh? So we we move this thing, right, which is so we move this thing to here. So that the physical set is not empty anymore. Becomes right, the single point zero. Uh, could we instead try to solve without the, the delta? And if we find out that there is no solution, we just use if start as zero. Oh, I see. Um, in this case, I think it would work. Yes, yes. That's a very good intuition. Yeah. Uh, it, when you have inertia, right? So in this case, the kinematic model, that's a very good intuition, yeah. Because as you're saying, right, we're, we're trying to solve this and we're walking. But if you can stop immediately, right? So if we set u is equal to zero, x is not going to move. That's the kinematic versus the then, if there is no solution, we stop. And we remain in the invariant set. That's a good point. If you have uh, inertia, though, that's not Because you're saying, OK, because of my inertia, um, I, need to, I need to slow down before, right, in the way, before crossing, before, before arriving to this uh, to, to the edge, to the unseen. I need to slow down a little before. Right. And if my my stability like that tells me to go down, mm -hmm. then uh, at some point you're gonna get invisibility when you are here. And then having zero as control input, like you don't slow down, you keep your velocity, it's not gonna keep you safe because you're you're posting at uh, constant constant velocity. So in that case, what you can do is to break at the maximum deceleration. Okay. But Again, it's not guaranteed. You can make it work, but it's not guaranteed. But for kinematics, yes, absolutely. The, um, let's say the, um, the drawback of this is just that, okay, in 1D, that's the best you can do because you can never cross. You can never uh, reach this point without crossing. In 2D, though, that there might be a way around right? this unsafe. Uh, now you are in 2D. This is the, uh, the person seen from above, and he wants to go here, but it is this low point. So you're saying, okay, I move, I move, I move, and then. Here there is no solution at all. But actually, if you have a, if you have a delta, why not you go down? And basically achieve both classes. Eventually. But in the meantime, I'm here, it is bigger. The first task, right? The stability would like you to go state you go. Whereas the invariant would like you to go somehow away from the object, away from the object. So, 
for the same reason, right? You, you might want to slack a little bit this stage and then because the problem is that you you want to decrease you want to go to the origin of this with the rate which, which is given by amplitude. so if you, for any reason you are slowing down because of an obstacle even if you're moving gen generally towards the the rule uh, this constraint might not be satisfied. So you need to attend. You're saying, okay, I don't want to go that, I cannot go that fast towards, towards my goal. So I need to slow down. This one's, yeah. This is the case where, um, where X here we said it was equal to two, or three, but it was equal to three, right? One was saying, has to be less than or equal to minus point uh, six. Oh, sorry, uh, minus six, and the other was saying greater than or equal to minus two. So both were saying you can move, but one was saying you need to move that fast because I want to go to zero that fast. The other one is saying no, we should not go that fast because otherwise some boy ever. So in that case, when this will see here, the u less than minus six and u greater than minus two. Six is can be relaxed to less than minus two and greater than minus two, so that you can still move. Slowly. So in this case, like the, the, the stopping condition would make you stop here. Uh, sorry, here. Because you might get invisibility even if you are not that. But this is a good uh, study. Because it highlights also the fact that uh, you would have to choose these two functions here. In uh, which are kind of arbitrary. I mean, nothing says that you cannot choose this value or the other value as long as this is the first thing. But they have effects, they have like, quite important effects on, on the behavior of the system. Right? More questions? So any any value in the solution is purchased or how to say um, yeah. wait, wait. for alpha six hundred and five hundred. Yeah. Uh, of course these alpha have to be plus three. So you can choose you choose to use a plus k much so alpha one of s equal to a A1 access like the here, then this A1 is a bit better. So if you choose this kind of function here, then as long as A1 and A2 are positive, then they can be empty. It's just that you're pushing right, your system faster to the output to zero or to your goal. In this case, you are um you are basically caring about the, the, the unseen region only with the very good. We will see we'll see the example in uh, that that will be that will be this very good. Do we have other types of stability like problems? No, because it is it's just this. Oh you mean different yeah, different kinds of probability. Like if we reach a goal, then we can escape. You mean examples of real life conditions where we very simple? Like, uh, or mathematical? Maybe even mathematical. No, no, mathematical, no. That's the only one. And feasibility is, is defined as that. 
So your your feasible self becomes empty. So you cannot choose anything. Right? Satisfies the constraint. In this case, where you have only two constraints, right? if you relax one, since the other is always going to be for all x, right? There is a u by the definition of the control value factor. Then you are uh, you are solved. You are solved. You are solved. We will see at the uh, yeah at the end of this, this lecture an example where you have a lot of constraints, not just two. When you want to execute three, four, five tasks, not the same time. In that case, you will need to relax all of them. And you can get interesting behavior essentially uh, by relaxing all we, we will talk about that. In a, in a what the way we choose the alpha functions? Mm. Is there any way that is like optimal or better to choose it, or you know, some kind of trick to, to know what's better for your model? Or um, yeah, that's a just point. feeling. The, I, don't know. I mean, tricks, I don't think there are tricks. Yeah. Um, optimal ways there are because that A1, if you write it like that, right, can be even even A1 could be an optimization value. So you can optimize for the best A1, right? which in a way gives you more freedom right, to the U, uh, which in the end is only the only thing you care about, right? The, the control input that you want to give to the goal. So, um, if you put A1 in the optimization, then you're not costing you much more than you, you, than you need. So yes, yeah, absolutely. I can, I can, uh, I can give you some, some references. Um, recently, where they, where they optimize the, the choice of the task as a part of the same. And there is also actually a paper which yeah, is also very interesting. On what is the um, the least right constraining uh, function, function, function? But um, yeah, that is uh, that is dependent. Yeah, I, I can send you the reference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not that. I mean, it's not uh, of interest. Let's say for the, for the this the purpose of this book. Yeah. But it's a very interesting example. If we have unpredictable behaviors, if we have relaxations, uh -huh. um, I mean, nothing, nothing is unpredictable in the sense that if you write it like that, then if there is a solution, it's going to satisfy those aspects. Right? So this is it's not, it's not unpredictable in this sense. Um, would be undesirable, right? Because um, if you relax all tasks, then you might uh, end up doing badly all tasks, right? Because in this case, we relax one task and we are doing badly only that task, right? So the stability light, which tells us go to zero, is, is not executed well, right? Because you have stopped in here. If you relax all of them, then you might end up not executing any of the tasks, even though you could. You could execute at least one or two, right? Depending on um, on your tasks, right? And the capability of the robot. Right? If the robot can execute multiple tasks at the same time, uh, and you relax all of them, then based on parameters, for example, the kappa, right? you might end up uh, not doing anything. If Kappa is very, 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 very small. Then delta, the cost associated with delta is very, very small. Right? So delta can grow very high. And still, you will not pay too much cost right? because it's not like very, very small. So the best solution to this is just to increase delta as much as possible. Or to a very high number. I think you very, very, slow, very low. So that means the robot is not going to move. 
and all tasks in front of the PhD we can apply to. Um, we are we are talk we are going to talk about this in the, the last part where I show you the map of us like what happens and uh, actually how you can leverage these new fit the fact that you know how they are executing well or bad based on basic data. There are no more questions. I will show you the simulation for a two-dimensional case, this, and then uh, uh, we'll see an example for manipulators and mobile. Let me All right, so this is the variance like process uh, pullout. That's at the end of the section that we said now it works on the variance like tasks. And uh, so it starts with the, this single integrator dynamics. So an example like that, but you need to be. First thing we need to do is to skip this whole thing. The solver, the Python solver for the And we need this uh, new problem. And then the single integrator is actually a very, very uh, simple class. Because the dynamics are the step function, are just uh, like Q, Q increments uh, by Q dot by Q. Uh, and the Q here are just X and Y position on the plane. Let's draw this picture of what we have not solved. Point that moves in the main as x dot equal to and then down to the level q dot, which q dot, which is x dot y dot, and it starts as minus. Then we can set the uh, desired goals and obstacles, uh, circular in this case. So they are centered at the uh, axle and have a diameter of uh, a radius of it. And uh, we set them to be the four. So the desired goal is four, zero. And uh, the obstacle is centered at uh, 1.5, 0.5 and has a radius of 1. You want to put this um, here, this point, and we will avoid five. 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 So this is the, the picture. And 
the diapos, so diapos, those various functions are defined here as B and H. B is is that as well. B is Q minus X bar squared. H is Q minus X squared minus X squared. Right? So is B and H. Now, to compute the input, just need to solve a quadratic problem that I have Q, G, H. Uh, so, in this case, uh, the opposition variable is three dimensional. So we have two dimensions for Q, one dimension, one dimension for Q. The Q matrix is kind of a block diagonal matrix. There's an identity on the top left block and the top part. This I think is what is just behind this. Yes, uh, So this Q is I zero zero. And G in this case is much is really simplified because we don't have the we don't have the F zero. So this one is uh, BX and BX, and then we have minus one for delta, and then minus the H DX zero. And this one is uh, minus the left H. So here, for example, this is the um, the upper left of G, which is the periodic of G with respect to G. And this is the lower left element of G, which is the derivative of uh, H with a minus sum. And uh, then this is the upper right term of G, which is the one that, that multiplies uh, delta. Very much. And then, uh, and then uh, G, Lower right is zero. H is a two dimensional because one component for each. And the first one is minus, you see, minus 10 times B. So that's our plus A function. Uh, 10 times B is our plus A. And then 50 times H for the, for the invariant sign. And then so QP will pass Q, the linear term of the cost. In this case is zero, um, and then G and H. I put it like this actually for a reason. Let's try to do just the um, just the stability like this. So we just pass in the first the first row right of uh, of the first things, which is just a stability like. How do we solve this? Okay. What happens? We start here at minus four, and then four, and then we have this off the way. Ah, the point just goes straight. Through. It doesn't care because there is no no invariance like constraint to stay away from this region. At the bottom here, like I promised to show, show you the evolution of B and H. Right? So 
So B goes to zero nicely exponentially. H instead, we would like it to be positive, right? For invariance. But in this case, it crosses zero, becomes negative when the this point gets into the unseen region, right? So here we are very close to zero, goes inside, and H correspondingly becomes negative. And then uh, as comes out on the other side, the H comes out from zero. From below zero. And then eventually you get to you get to the green point. Now uh, let's say the dual. If we only have uh, the invariance, right? So just consider the second constant. If we only have invariance, we're seeing when you start at minus four, don't hit with the red region. And that's all. What do you think? Level. Uh, because zero is in the physical set. If you don't move, you're not going to go. So that's what it means. Um, and since that's the, the, the global of the one that minimizes globally the term norm of the square, that's the point for the right? So let's put them here. So we see that. As we get close to the observable, as h gets close to zero, the gradient of h right, tells us to go to the right of the observable. So tells this blue dot to go to the right. And uh, this is not very noticeable in the b, but the b is somehow slowing down right, compared to what it would like to do. It's a very minor thing in this region. But the slope is somehow decreasing a little bit. Then, as it gets out, leaves. you can get to more extreme changes of the slope uh, by changing the position of the axis. Let's, change, let's actually change the position of the axis. Let's put oh, it. Uh, oh, there's a uh, question. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I think you're not uh, sharing the screen. So. Like I, I was following in the notebook, but now you have changed something. So, oh. <laughs> so I'm not seeing the results. No, 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 yes, 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 yes. Thank you, thank you. Um, were you able to see it from here? No, right? No, I, the... I was following on Google Collab, but now you, I don't know what oh, you have okay. changed. Perfect. Perfect. I think that's very anyway better. <laughs> so, um, yeah, apologies for that. And maybe very, very quickly, we, we can show this right, to the bad people who is going to watch this. Uh, so by considering only the first constraint, the one using just a stability light constraint, without caring about variance, what happens is that we're going to cross the red region. Right? So as we cross the red region, H, the variable function is going to become negative. That's because we're not controlling it with the main positive. And then it's going to come out to be positive again. Uh, dually, if you are just including the invariance like constraint, which means stay away from the red region and nothing else, then what we will see is that. Um, The robot doesn't move. Right? It says, "Okay, I'm in a seat. Uh, I'm in this. I'm in the uh, in the set where I want to be. And if I don't move, I stay there. So I just don't." Move. If we put them all together, the two of them together, 
where these are really like these are really like by the delta. Then we have this behavior. As we are getting close to the, to the uh, 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 forbidden or unsafe region, then we steer to the right. And now we steer to the right because that seems to be the best thing we should do. Right? This is like kind of the least deviation right? from where we would like to go. In a way, delta is going to be minimized as it should be. Which means if we, put, if we move down the obstacles, so in symmetric direction or position, we expect what it is now. And we should expect that the least change happens if we steer the so up above the X. In terms of V and H, nothing changes, right? Because everything is squared, so everything is symmetric in respect to that. But the gradient obviously changes. It changes the sign of the component in the Y direction. That's what gives us a way to go up. Now, obviously, the natural question is what if we put the obstacle right in the middle, right? Uh, which means in this case uh, at zero, y component. And since we start on the x axis and we want to end up on the x axis, we're just going to move on this line, on the, on the x axis. At some point, I'm going to just get stuck behind the obstacle. So, this is something that as we were saying yesterday, only happens in simulation. There's no way uh, the y position is exactly zero. Besides, not even in simulation happens all the time, right? Uh, this is an interesting experiment. Like, let's say the obstacle is at uh, zero, zero. We start at, um, we're going to go to four, and we start at minus four, minus four. Or let's start at minus four, minus three, and we're going to go to four. Right? So that's still symmetric. Everything is symmetric. Right? The feature is like that. The obstacle is right in the middle. You can start here. And we're right down. So we should, should go straight through the center of the obstacle. Let's go there. Ah. What is this? No, it's still one dimensional, it's just that it's inclined, right? The, 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 this line on which we move. Oh, wait, um, that's something wrong. <laughs> um, minus four, minus three. Minus four, minus three. Plus four, plus three. Ah, why did that happen? It's going to happen always the same. I find we should not, right? because everything is symmetric. So the same thing that we had on the, on the horizontal line is just rotated, but everything is. The problem though, there is one thing that is not, that is not in a way exact, which is the solution, the numerical solution of the condition. Right? So the solution that the sol QP function returns is not exactly the global of because that doesn't solve it uh, analy uh, um, analytically. It solves it numerically, right? By something like the gradient descent that we saw. But that never reaches the global of exactly the global of. 
is, is close enough. I mean, as, as time goes, really then short. <laughs> Global. Um, in finite time, that uh, doesn't not happen. Why did not? Why this didn't happen before? Because before we started, one variable started at zero, and the gradient of that variable was always exactly zero. So that variable never moved right from zero. In this case, he said, sure, it's zero, zero minus four minus three, right? So as we move towards zero, we're gonna to get to a point that is minus 1.0 minus 1.0. Right? But since that's not exactly minus 1.0, it might be minus 0.99999, right? that's gonna get out of this step, even, even in simulation. But that's just a, a curiosity because in practice, this is not a problem. The position is never exactly zero, not just because of numerical representation, but because of uh, measurement errors, localization errors, and so on. So this is not. Um, do you have any questions? But is it possible to in reality? Because if a uh, body this acceleration because it was very very ah yeah 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 of course of course yeah that's not ideal and i mean depending on your r or my little r more people and seals you could still follow this kind of uh, abrupt models. that's a, that's another good point right? the model sure is there X uh, or it's X dot equal to F zero plus F one times U. But on U, there are also some maximum minimum constraints. So that's another R constraint rather than U infinity. U, let's say U infinity, like less than U max. So each component of U has to be within the box, right? Within an interval. Um, which makes things we had the to solve, right? Um, but that's in reality, you, really, you cannot give uh, a velocity or an acceleration, like in this case, of I don't know, a thousand meters per second squared, because that is the option. You cannot do it. Um, so, I want to show you the, the effect of. Uh, Let's not now. Let's let's focus on random position, not just on the everything online, the food environment. So one is done. That's one. What I wanted to show you is the effect of the class Choice. Let's see this. Okay, fine. Now, let's say the class K function of the of the stability line of state is different. Let's, for example, uh, increase this number. Mm -hmm. Which means we are asking the system to go faster towards the goal. That's uh, a behavior that we should expect. And in fact, for the stability type, I think is much easier to, to somehow imagine what is going to happen. Ah, question. Now it's pushing so hard that the velocity is too much right? at the beginning. For the for the safety of staying. So the safety is saying ah, the invariance, right? It's saying uh, go much wider. Don't get that close. Huh? We're we gonna even see that the first step is is uh, is huge as the first velocity. Is if we decrease it on the other on the other end.
then the rate at which P should go to zero is zero. And so rates go around and again. What if um, we put it back to where it was and change the other? So now we have a 50. This, this is not very intuitive, right? To we'll, we'll figure out what is the, is the median of this function, or in this case, this value. Let's put uh, so this regulates the speed at which this age function uh, uh, can go to what can move towards zero. So if this is very high number, we should expect this age to, for example, like in this case, do these kind of abrupt changes as it goes towards zero. Because the speed at which it can decrease is very fast. If we decrease this number, then the speed at which it goes to zero has to be low, cannot be that fast. So in this picture, in the two-dimensional picture, right, the state space, that means that we cannot get to the obstacle too fast. Right? We cannot get close to the obstacle too fast. We need to start slowing down before. So the easy it, let's see, easy it from 50 to 10. Should in a way keep the keep the blue point uh, further away from the obstacle or slower when it gets to the gets to the right. You see the H here. Before it was going, it was getting very close to zero, and then suddenly changing. Right? Whereas here is more smoother, right? And again, we can see this in the, in the state space. Uh, the robot is just gently right, steering away. You can explain more with this, but uh, this is the intuition. Right? You regulate the rate at which P and H are converged to zero. Um, right. And there was one thing that I wanted to show, but I didn't. I didn't think. The effect of what delta does in all this. Right? Now that is of great interest uh, in terms of controlling the robot, I think it's useful to, um, to know. So let's add, let's, let's add another axis. We have the axis of delta, the axis of delta. Um, Here for the then the age. Okay, then Set here to um, the only thing is that we need to get delta from something. So we we define uh, the value. Populated when when we saw the condition. Which seems to be the third. Then this is the third element of the solution is solved. 
and uh, the field of R is the first and second. Uh, Oh, there you go. Wait, I think I can see it. The last yes. This will show the trajectory of the optimal delta, the optimal slant line, as the last one. Yeah, that's the reason. So, short sure, at the beginning of something, and then it goes to zero, or very close to zero, when we exit the task. And the interesting point is the symmetric point. Right, and we were everything was happening on these axis, on these horizontal axis, and we actually get stuck behind the oxygen. Right? So in that case, we should see the what, what would you expect, right? As we saw for the one D case, we should see the delta increase and stay constant, right, to some value to relax the, the stability like us in favor of the other. In this case, we have that the delta and the v are somehow related to each other, right? Because eventually, right, in this case, the u is zero, right? So v and delta somehow have balance in order for u equals zero being uh, a feasible solution. That's exactly. I double check if uh, I didn't really say, but I think it should be. It seems only the thing seems. Uh, do you have any questions? Oh, this okay. Um, if not, let me just show you two. More examples like the same thing applied to manipulators and mobile robots. So it's uh, um, building up on the stability like tasks of the previous uh, lab. So for manipulators, for example, that's the same classes. We have the same classes for, uh, that we use for the previous uh, lab. And as I was saying, in addition to the stability like tasks of this, where we said that we would drive the end effect towards X bar. In here, we want to have the end effect away from this X E double bar, at least D distance away. Okay. So it's literally everything is the same. The only thing that changes is that you have a Jacobian field. Right? So when you consider the, the, the dynamics of the, uh, the end effect, um, the only thing that you have different from a point is the Jacobian. Because your input is the uh, velocity of the joints. So between the joints, velocity of the joints and the velocity of the end effect, there is this job. That's literally what happens. Um, so this one, this class is the one that has, you see, the solution of this QP as um, uh, uh, literally as the point that moves with QP, but with a job of And uh, oh, this is the solution. So we want to start here. We want to go to the green point, avoid this red region. What happens is that still green. 
in this case, again, we need to figure out what the velocity of joints are so that the end effect of the steel is equal. Similarly, for um, the mobile component, same thing as last time. And the difference here, I, I don't, I, I didn't write explicitly this V dot in H dot all here in H. I didn't explicitly uh, write in V dot in H dot because there are just a long expression of explicable. Um, but the, the, the barrier control barrier function here is very very similar to the control yard function of time, where we want to stay away from a point and steer away from that point as we get into it. So that's uh, that's it. And uh, the, the simulation with the with the sort of thing as used in the video So we start, start at this point, this orientation, we want to get to this point, avoid system. So this is get steering. Where the steering is somehow given by the third, the third um, part. Of the control band, like move or your angle should be away from you, pointing away from you. That's it. So it's interesting because um, here we are just, you see, we are seeing, we are, we are making statement on the state. First. Right? This is the state, theta and Q2, Q1, right, are the state of the system. Um, but the h dot greater than or equal to minus h of q is a statement on the input as a constraint of input u, which is how much we need to steer right? and uh, slow down or accelerate the to do that. So we are not coding in a way uh, directly the fact that we need to steer, uh, but we are getting that as a result of the specification that we don't want to. Uh, in a way, point towards the right. Any questions on manipulating or solving by? Can we place uh, u star in a function like square root so we smooth down these accelerations? Uh, Those are fun. Oh, you mean out, outside after the you saw? Okay, after I saw the ah, that's a uh, that's a good question. The thing is, then you you are not solving, you're not fulfilling those constraints, right? Yeah, yeah. But if you want to smooth it out, smooth it out in a way, uh, there are there are there are ways. Of course, there are ways. Um, the most interesting, I would say, is the one that is based on, instead of this continuous, instead of this continuous model, um, I now am working with models in the new side. Which is the power control of fine. So this is all continuous. This is a very unexpected time. Discrete models. Continuous time. Discrete time models. Would be something like X at 
sine of x plus one equal to x zero x k and sine of x plus one equal to x zero x k times so in this case it's uh, obviously the x so if the f zero f one are the same these models are not the same that goes y c that's the derivative equal to this this is saying that's the next step state right so by the way that's a general form of new sign that's a general form of discrete time uh, if you have this discrete time then what you can what, what you can do and it's something that is actually done in solving the optimization is to say okay do whatever you need to do A uh, subject to the uh, so. invariant stars. Right. But then here we also say let's add another term of state by C. Which is this? Right. So we're saying that we don't want the UK and the one that we're optimizing to be too different from the previous. Of course, if these constraints are very restrictive, then you might need to deviate a lot. But this term helps keeping the the the. Uh, inputs from G too much. Like in this case, we're probably going to have something soon. But it's, it's, I mean, it's not guaranteed because this is not a thing. It's just another term. Let's uh, try to not do this kind of harsh. Uh, well, defending the continuous slide. If x zero is zero, there is no difference in optimization because if you take the same path, the work done is the same. What do you mean x zero is zero? Like if you consider Newtonian mechanics, mm -hmm. uh, you take the same direction, you move forward, mm -hmm. and it's Guarantee to take the same path if I take uh, the U star in the equations or some function. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, 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 okay. So you're saying geometrically it's the same path, yeah. but you're slowing it down. So you're just slowing it down. Uh, that, that's true. It's just that you're not satisfying those constraints, right? Because if you slow down, then you're not going as fast as you would like towards the, the goal, for example. But yeah, in general, it's a, it's a, it's a good point. Like a, a time scale. You're just introducing a time scale, huh? In a way. Yes. That's it. Yeah. 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 That's why. Yeah. Yes. If you, if you, if there are way, if there are applications which you don't care exactly of getting to the point um, as fast as that says, right? As much as you care about keeping this acceleration low, then that's a great point because. Um, yeah, the same reason, the same thing has to work for the invariant side, right? If you're saying, I don't want to hit a car in front of me, right? And then you're saying, oh, the acceleration not to hit is minus six meters per second squared, but then you square root that, and then you hit the car. Or oh, square root minus that, right? It's negative. But you're saying, okay, let me, let me just proceed slow, let me accelerate slow. And then you might get it done. But, uh, but in principle, it's, uh, it's a good idea, like right? this kind of time speed. In fact, so this optimization based approach is relatively new. In the past, it was in a way much more um, like handcrafted. And therefore, you you would get this kind of these kind of behaviors. Um, and people solve this by scaling the time. So, so that the derivatives were literally multiplied by constant, which is your your uh, the derivative is uh, therefore you 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 slow down the whole behavior 
and uh, and solve this way the problem with the maximum solution. Because if you if you if you don't know don't know how to handle this thing, uh, if you don't use optimization, then whatever your method tells you, the you that you should apply. If that is greater exceeding you max, all you can do is just slow down the whole by a time scale in such a way that you become less. Then there is also an interesting paper on this. If you send me an email, also as you can do like on the on the uh, on the great review special, I can send you these papers. And how to choose the fast key function down part of nice loops and how to uh, how to deal right how to change the, the component to down by, by scale getting down all the time. Okay, so all right, so I think we can we can stop here actually because I and I do not have time. Show you the manipulator example. Maybe I will just show you the video so that it's easier for tomorrow. Then, uh, and then tomorrow we'll see how it's done. So here we have this manipulator. Can you see actually these lights? Yeah. Anyway, there is this manipulation. It's like a, it has seven degrees of freedom, so seven joints. And it's uh, they are arranged in such a way that they are very close to our human heart. So it has like two, two joints here, you can do this and this. And it has this, this joint which are the elbow. And then uh, this and this and this, which are this. Can only end this So now the tasks here were um, uh, move this point towards a given point in space, orient this point to the camera, and here is the camera view. And so orient this point in such a way that it looks at this guy, guys here. Um, and at the same time, you should avoid the limits of each of these joints. So you cannot rotate each of the joints more than it can. This is good. So what happens is at the beginning, the beginning, the the, the task that you want to do best is to move towards orienting right the, the camera in such a way that this guy is in the center of the the second task, which is also kind of stability, right? means that you need to move this arm, the end effect of the desired position, and all these while respecting this uh, constraints of joints. These are different, different combinations. Here we first move towards the position, and then into this position. And then we do the orientation. That focuses on the, the point of interest. And the formulation that we will see uh, allows us to, in a way, define a priority. Tasks. Right, so in this case, we want to do this is joint limit annoyance, one of we want to keep each of the joints within the limits at this point. And then visual subpoint, which means center this dice in the camera. And then the end effect of the vision. In this uh, priority order. And at some point, we can also change the priority to be different tasks to get different meaning. And this is done using, uh, so here we got three tasks. Is we slap all of them. But actually, we have the three tasks, we slap two out of three. 
Okay. Here we have the John Linear avoidance, which is the invariance, which we not we don't slap. Always on excellent. And then end effect position and visual support are are slap. And this slap actually allows us to generate. As I said, I don't want to accept the, 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 the formulation now. I don't know. Finish it so we can, uh, we can, I can show you this and more uh, mobile role. Let's say more involved mobile role in that was something that also involves the, the energy uh, in the battery in robots and the coordination between multiple robots at the same time. So that's something that I want to show you. In the last, in the last, last uh, and tomorrow there's also going to be a guest lecture, and um, she's uh, also a professor in the University of Canada, where I am, and she's also participating in the in the special session of at the conference uh, uh, starting next week. Right? So I think she's also going to talk about optimization in robot control, uh, different models, different uh, techniques of optimization. But so that you have a feeling of what else, right? Is in position by the besides of this one. Sure. Thank you. So All right. I'll see you tomorrow in 317. Right? So where we were, where we were. Uh, okay. So let's so it's like that that you work. Hmm? You get things in the See the world in these things, and you see if it's working. Then, what do you think? This is what you do. Work. Ah, for research, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Also, real, I yeah. just need to make sure. I'll show you some real global videos. Thing. I wish I could bring actually uh, some real, some. Small scale mobile models here. Yeah, that was uh, a little bit tough for the for the travel. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe in a future edition, <laughs> I I will be, I can show you what kind of robots uh, um, we use uh, for this. But what I show you tomorrow is can be replicated yeah, on this different. Yeah, but this is. Uh, yeah, I think tomorrow I'm also gonna include in this video, right? I'm all, I'm also gonna talk about more research tools and that I did on this. Yeah.